Hey everybody, my name is Zach Wall, presenting on behalf of TechLink International for this installment of the TechLink Anaplan Expert Series on Anaplan's Application Lifecycle Management feature. And specifically what I want to talk about in this video is how to prepare a model for application lifecycle management. Properly setting up the different model environments will allow developers a smooth transition when it comes time to release new features and promote bug fixes. Application Lifecycle Management, or ALM for short, really enhances the capabilities of Anaplan and has come a long way in its development, leading to three main reasons its use is considered best practice. ALM is an Anaplan feature that allows agility in ongoing development. It allows new features to be released into the production environment seamlessly with minimal interruption to the live tool. And finally, it automatically timestamps features as revision tags that include a description of the feature being released. So, Anaplan considers two different types of data as separate entities, production data and structural data. Knowing the difference between the two is fundamental to understanding how ALM functions. Production data is data that the end user can add, edit, and delete. They are the values either put in by the end user in input modules or lists that have been marked as production lists. This is the data that is editable in deployed mode. However, this data is not synced during ALM and needs to be connected from model to model through data imports. Structural data is the data that allows the model to function as required. This is sometimes referred to as metadata. Examples of structural data include non-production lists, configuration settings, modules and their line items, versions, and dashboards. This can also be thought of as all the data that a user cannot directly change. This data cannot be edited in deployed mode. It is the data that will be synced from model to model using the compare and sync process. So a little more on production lists. So lists marked as production data contain information that the end user can add, edit, and delete with proper security. An example of this would be adding or editing employee data on a dashboard. If the employee data list is not marked as a production list, this function will be lost if the model is in deployed mode. And this is because non-production lists are considered structural data. Now if it were marked as a production list, it would retain its functionality while in deployed mode. Another point of interest when talking about production lists is hard coding specific items in the production list. Items of a list that are hard coded are unable to be marked as the production lists. And a typical formula um, is shown on the bottom of the slide. And also, if the list is already marked as a production list and you try to reference that formula, it will also return an error. So it works both ways. A developer can promote a list to a production list by going under the general list section under the column production data and checking the box. So some other common data that's typically promoted to production data is both production imports and their import data sources. Both of these types of data can be promoted to production data under the action settings in the imports and import data sources tab. Typical best practice is if you want an import to be production data, you want to go ahead and promote that import data source to be production data as well. And this is going to allow end users to adjust both the mapping and the source of action imports in a dashboard. Now that we've talked about different types of data, let's talk about model modes and status options. There are four different Anaplan model modes and two model status options available. Standard mode is the normal mode for all Anaplan models. It's the default. All of the data is editable by any user who has permissions according to the user's model access level. As referenced earlier and what we have highlighted on this slide is the deployed mode. In deployed mode, all modifications to structural data are locked. Only production data is able to be changed, which can be done through the use of input modules, dashboards, and lists that have been marked as production lists. As stated, non-production lists, their formulas, and any other structural data cannot be changed in deployed mode. These changes must be made in the dev model and then synced across. The two other model modes are locked and archived. Locked is a read-only model for all users and locks both structural and functional data changes. In archive mode, all the data is saved and still exists, 
but is marked as inaccessible and can only be accessed by restoring the data first. This is useful for storing multiple copies without taking up storage in the workspace. The two model status options available are online and offline. Online is the default and can be used by any user with permissions. Offline can only be used by workspace administrators. Typically, the dev and test environments are kept offline for admin use only. Okay, so now we're going to talk about revision tags. If a developer creates added functionality with updates to the structural data in a model with plans to launch these changes into the production environment, the revision tag must be created. A revision tag is a snapshot of a model's structural data at the point in time the tag was created. This is done in the dev instance to log any changes that have been made so those changes can be promoted into the production environment. So there are really two ways to create a revision tag. An Anaplan model will automatically create a revision tag when the model is copied. Or you can manually create one under revision tags in the model settings tab. Creating these revision tags allows developers to reference back to the added capabilities and features in the dev model before launching the changes into the production model. A little more on revision tags. So the screenshot is what the revision tags settings look like under model settings and some added functionality relating to revision tags. Developers can create a model from a revision tag, which allows the structural data to be copied across to a new model without any production data. It's commonly used for the dev and test environments as an efficient use of workspace size. This practice typically ends up saving developers a lot of time as well. This is because errors and formulas take time to be restored, and when the models are smaller, they're able to be restored a lot faster. So as this information pretty much sums up the background of all ALM functionality, let's move on to the process of prepping a model for ALM. First, you're going to want to take the current model offline. You're going to want to mark all production lists, imports, and import data sources. And you're going to want to create a copy of that model. Immediately following, you're going to want to promote that production model to deployed mode. This is going to secure the compatibility between the two models. Finally, and one thing we didn't really talk about is you're going to want to remap the model to model imports. And this is typically done if you're going with a split model approach, or you have scheduled imports coming from outside of Anaplan, or you have scheduled imports coming from a data hub. For a demonstration of this process in a real Anaplan model, be sure to check out our next video. And also feel free to reach out to TechLink with any questions at anaplan at techlink.com.